So we're back to working on roof trusses. Then we're going to take the next couple of days to do that. We're going to get this packet finished up. And what we're going to look at today is we're going to add into it now, rather than just a simple rectangle that we've been working on, because we've been dealing with things like this. Um, let's say we have a 32 foot span and we'll go 8, 12 slope. We, let's say we want to know the height and the common rafter length. I use J for the common rafter length there. So the first thing we're going to find, of course, is the height. And we're going to use this run of 16 feet. So we'll use an 8, 12 slope equals H over 16. Hopefully you guys are getting pretty good at this calculation by now. Cross, multiply, and divide. 8 times 16 divided by 12 gives us... Ten point six seven. You had me scared there for a second. What's that? So we're at ten point six seven feet is what we're running at there. So now to find J, and of course your answer would be listed as ten point ten point six seven comes ten foot eight inches. To find J then we're going to use the ten point six seven and it'll be the square root of 16 squared and the 10.67 squared. Now in order to keep from round off errors, I'm going to leave that 10.67 in my calculator. Second square root, second answer squared plus 16 squared. Yeah, on your calculator? Yeah, down at the equal sign, right? Right above it, it says ANS. Or is it right next to it on the negative sign, one of the two? Okay. So you hit second A and S and it'll bring that number right back into the calculation. Which is what I just did here. See it says A and S there? Yep. I just did second A and S and it brought that number back into my calculation from the previous answer. If we need to do more than just the last number, then you have to use the memory functions on your calculator. But most everything we do, all you'll need is that last number. So we got 19.23 feet is our common rafter length. And at this point, I'm just assuming you guys can convert that into feet, inches, and sixteenths from there. Well, we're going to step up today from simple trusses like that to now trusses that have a heel height. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about when I use the term heel on a truss? Yeah, it's like number 40 or 39. The heel is when the truss does not come down to those nice little pointed corners. It has a little bit of a raised edge on it. And most trusses do because they're not built with wires. They're built with wood. So at the very least, you get the thickness of the lumber that gives you a heel height there. So let's say that this has an 8-inch heel on a 40-foot span and a 9-12 slope. Let us find the height and the common rafter length again. So, I'm going to do this. I'm actually going to cut this off here. This is 20 feet. And I'm going to find this. This is not the height. But I'm going to call it A. So, 9 over 12 equals A over 20. Cross, multiply, and divide. 9 times 12 is 180. Or, I'm sorry, 9 times 20 is 180. Divide by 12 is 15. So A is 15 feet, which makes H 15 plus 8. This would be 8 inches, not 8 feet, sorry. 8 inches. I just put the wrong symbol there. So that makes that 15 <laughs> feet, bless you, 8 inches. Bless you again. Now, when I go to find the common rafter length here, J, do I use the 15 feet 8 inches? No. no, I use A, which is just the 15 feet, because I'm just using this triangle. This down here doesn't play into it. Bless you again. So J, the common rafter length, is the square root of 15 squared plus 20 squared, which gives us 25. So J is 25 feet. Any questions? How do you do your homework? Ready to do the homework? <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> anyway, um, So this one not only has a heel height, it has a tail on it. So let's give this a 9 inch heel height, a 2 foot overhang, 36 foot span, and a 612 slope. We want to find the height and the common rafter length. So, we're going to start here again. This length is 18 feet. We're going to find this length. I'll call it A again. 6 over 12 equals A over 18. What's A going to be? 9. Cross multiplying divide, you're going to get 9 there. So, H is 9 feet 9 inches. How do I find J? So 9 squared plus 18 squared? No. Why not? Because that only goes to here. We need to go all the way down here. So we actually have to start with a whole new triangle. we got to go down to here now. This is now 18 feet plus the 2-foot overhang. This is 20 feet here. We need to find this height now, right here. I'll call that B. 6 over 12 equals B over 20, giving us that B is 10 feet. So now that triangle is 10 feet by 20 feet to give us J. It's the square root of 10 squared plus 20 squared. So you have to find that new height based off of that run. Yep. So that's 22.361. So J is 22.361. What do you think? Good stuff? Well, we're going to throw in there something else along with it. That's J, yep. That's the 10 squared plus 20 squared. Okay, so here's what we're going to throw in here next. An attic truss. So this actually has a room built into the truss. We're going to call this W for wall height, C for ceiling length. My heel here I'm going to label as... 28 inches. We usually have quite a high heel on our attic trusses. We're going to give this a span of, oh, let's go 32 feet. And we'll give it a 10, 12 slope. We usually have a pretty considerable slope on an attic truss. We want to find this height. We want to find J. One more piece of information I need to give you. Let's say that that is, let's get back here, 8 feet. So we can find H. I'm going to do this, draw this in like this. Yep, it would be 8 feet over here too. You're going to have to assume it's symmetrical. Yep. This is 16 feet here. I'm going to call this piece A again. 10 over 12 equals A over 16. So 160 divided by 12. Thirteen point three three. What's that? So that's thirteen feet four inches, plus twenty eight inches. Well, that's two feet four inches, right? Thirteen feet four inches plus two feet four inches is eight inches and fifteen feet. So H is fifteen feet eight inches. 
Okay, does everybody see where that 15.8 came from? Okay. Now, we can find J here because there's no overhang. If there was an overhang, we'd have to draw in a bigger triangle, find a new height, and all that. There's no overhang here, so we can find J based on the 16 and the 13.33. So it's going to be A squared plus B squared. J will be the square root of 13.33 squared plus 16 squared. So second square root, second answer squared, plus 16 squared, 20.827. There's J. Now we've got to find W and C. So we're going to come back down to W here. Yep. So to find W, I'm actually going to go on this side because I haven't messed this side up yet. This is 8 feet. I'm going to find this height here, which I'm going to call B. So you've got 10 over 12 still is the, is the slope of this. Equals B over 8, which should give us like 6.67, I believe. And it does. What's that? That's 6 feet. 8 inches. And we're going to add to that 2 feet, 4 inches from the 28, which gives us, well, that's 12 inches, so that's 0 carry the 1. That is exactly 9 feet. So our wall height is 9 feet. C is really easy to find. You got 32, you subtract 8 feet off of each side, C is 16 feet. What's the thing? Better than a sharp stick in the eye? No. No. Well, the key to these is to just do them. So at this point, you guys have all the information you need to get up through number 66 on this test. I realize that's like 35 more problems, so I'm going to just turn you loose, give you guys the last 20 minutes to work on it.